the hunger is still there to improve yourself. Oh, and two to Kendry Morales. The Red Sox coming in after the Oakland A's. They were able to get their opener in today against Tampa Bay and beat the Rays 5 3 at Fenway. Red Sox will be here at the Big A this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't think Vladdy was about to try and steal that bag, but okay, he'll throw over there anyway. Ahead of Kendry Morales, 0-2. And, and he rips one into the gap in left center field. That's going to be in there for extra bases. Sweeney gets to it. They hold Vlad up at third base. Kendry Morales with a double, but Vlad Guerrero not able to score from first base, which isn't surprising. That's the thing about Kenny Morales is the ability to be able to drive the ball hard and deep into the alleys. Both on the left side and the right side. The flag going around again. Corey Hunter that double, tried to score him earlier, had to stay at third. Same thing here now with Kenny Morales. But the ball was hit very well by Kendry. It's a double for Kendry. And we'll see now if the Angels can get a big two-out hit. The Angels have left three men on base in the first two innings. Juan Rivera grounds one foul. The Angels left the bases loaded in the first inning. Second and third, two out here in the third. One and one. The Angels have already scored one run on a wild pitch. That was in the first. Or in the second, rather. But this one's hit to Cabrera. And the Angels will leave runners in scoring position once again. They leave him at second and third. And after three, two to nothing, Angels. at the Big A as we go to the fourth inning against the Oakland Athletics. Fans, this Thursday the Angels will be inducting Chuck Finley and Brian Downing into the Angels Hall of Fame. All fans in attendance will receive a free Angels Hall of Fame plaque courtesy of AT&T. Tickets for this game are still available for $3 in the view level and $5 in the lower view level. 
when using the password VLAD at the Angel Stadium ticket window or angelsbaseball.com. No more. That's awesome. Get the Rally Monkey costume ready. <laughs> if need be, just in case. Nomar leads off the fourth inning for the Oakland A's. That's awesome. Look at that smile, <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, that's great. Good ears on that costume. <laughs> Nomar is the first Oakland A to wear number one since Billy Martin. Breaking ball for Mosley stayed a little bit high. Two and two. up the middle. Nomar garcia Parra with a single. Oakland's had at least a hit every inning. Still no runs. But they get the leadoff man on for the third time in four innings. Just a great hitter Nomar is. You think about it, he was, he was contemplating retirement. Here he is in the number four in that lineup for Bob Guerin's Oakland A's. Well, he's not only good enough to still play for somebody, he's good enough apparently to hit cleanup for somebody. A high chopper to the right side. Tough play. Mosley gets over there and they get the out on Eric Chavez. All that work in spring training paid off. Boy, all morning long, as he knew as a pitcher, he was covered first base and the flip by the first baseman. That's a tough one. Otherwise, chopper's off the plate. Played by Kenny. Good feed, too. That's something he worked on all spring training long. Getting those good feeds over the pitches they cover that bag. It's not an easy thing to do. Best I've ever seen was Wally Joyner, former Angel, and right, played together in Kansas City. Every feed was perfect, right in your chest. Jack Cust at the plate. Cust had a base hit his first time up. Nomar at second base with one out in the fourth inning, and the Angels leading it 2 0. Oh, and two. Let's pitch it east and west. Go fastball inside and fastball on the outside part of the plate. Way ahead of the count. Guy with a lot of power, but a guy who will strike out a lot. So you got to expand that zone. Make him swing at your pitch. One ball, two strikes. They tried the curveball 0-2 in the dirt. Cuss didn't chase it. No more at second. And there's a drive into right field. Well hit. That sends Abreu back, but it's over his head. He plays the carom perfectly, holding Cuss to a single. No more scores the A's first run of the series. It's two to one, Angels. Well, that ball was close by Jack Cust. This be a pitch on the outside part of the plate and down. Harvey Brave played off the wall very well. They might have had a shot at the plate. He hit so hard. I never thought about it for a second. Still with the one run lead, he won't let a base runner get in scoring position. 
So it goes down as an RBI single for Cust, even though he hit it off the wall. Kurt Suzuki at the plate now. That's Oakland's first run in the two days of this series. Cal State Fullerton, Kurt Suzuki. And it's no balls and two strikes to the Oakland catcher. Mathis out to talk to Mosley, who was ahead of Costco in two, but let that get away. And he wants to make sure that they're on the same page, Mike, but you're looking on. You're ahead of the count there. You don't want to give him something good to hit. You expand the zone. He threw Cust an 0-2 curveball in the dirt. Let's see what he comes back here. Right Suzuki. back again. Same thing. Curveball. Yep. Very similar pitch. But Suzuki didn't chase it either. Didn't chase that one, but a lot of times if he come back that same pitch, he might be willing to swing at it. He went 0-2 through the curveball to Cust, but then came back with that fastball that got a little bit too much to the plate. Sometimes you give the hitter too much of a benefit. You throw that curveball once again. I don't want a fastball to the outside corner. And Suzuki nails it into right center field. Hunter to cut it off, holding Suzuki to a single. But Cust goes on to third. So the last two hitters, Mosley's been way ahead, but not able to finish him off. And Butcher's going to go out and visit with him. Because sometimes in a situation right here, it's, it's a pitch sequence. You know, you're going to talk about Mike Butch. You're going to talk to Dustin Mosey and Jeff Mathis about that. And Oakland has the tying run at third base now. With one out here in the fourth inning. A batter coming up in Travis Buck. He had a good spring this year. He hit four home runs and drove in 16 runs this spring. And he runs well, too, so it's going to be difficult. He gets out of the batter box from that left side very well, so it's going to be a tough one to get a double play, but this is what Mosey's looking for, a double play ball. Travis Buck was a star at ASU. Runners on the corners for the A's. The Angels need a double play ball. One and zero. Mosley trying to work out of another jam. Oakland has five hits. Ground ball to the right side. It hit. No, it didn't hit the runner. Or did it? The umpire signals safe. Now he signals out. And let's see what the call is. The out's at first base. Well, it deflected off his glove. It looked like a chance, a possibility of a double play ball. If Kenny Morales feels that cleanly. Well, that's pretty close to hitting that run, but it hit Morales first, didn't it? Yeah, it hit the glove first. So at that point, everything's in play. Right. Hit the glove, then hit the foot. Good call at first base. Sam Holbrook right on top of it. Kenny was able to bounce back and get the out, though. But the run scores from third to tie the game. And Mark Ellis at the plate for the A's. Strike one to Ellis. Mosley's been in some jams pretty much every inning, so that pitch count's getting up there. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. That's one reason why he's been able to get through some of these innings, because he's getting a lot of strikes. Back up the middle by Ellis.
Ross. It's a base hit into center. Torrey Hunter is going to throw it to the plate on a line, but late. He just got the hand in there. And Oakland has their first lead in two nights. Torrey got himself in good throwing position. Jeff Mathis doing a nice job of blocking it. He barely got his hand in Suzuki, but nice job of Mathis trying to fly the tag afterward. Coming in off the line, just a little bit off the line, the throw was. Mathis blocked it pretty good. Back to the top of the order now, Ryan Sweeney with Oakland suddenly leading 3-2. And two to Sweeney. And Mosley trying to get out of what has been a damaging fourth inning so far. He's having a tough inning, but it becomes a little bit more glaring now the opportunities the Angels have had that they've not been able to cash in on. The Angels have left five men on base, four in scoring position through the first three innings. One and two to Ryan Sweeney. Two balls, two strikes. Sosha has seen the A's score three times this inning and still watching Mosley to see if he can get out of this against the Oakland leadoff hitter in Ryan Sweeney. And he got him looking. That gets Mosley out of the jam, but Oakland takes the lead. Three to two in the fourth. fourth inning in Anaheim. Fans five of the funniest comedians of our time take center stage for the premiere of Comics Unleashed tomorrow night starting at nine right here on my 13th. Well you got to be thinking about getting in there. You're a funny guy. I didn't make the top five though apparently. Jeff Mathis is the batter. He takes a strike. I'd like to know who the top five are. I guess we'll have to watch that show. Yes. On the ground to third, Eric Chavez throws out Mathis. Eric Ibar is stepping up there now. Well, now young Trevor Cahill in his major league debut has a chance to win. 
if you're Trevor Cahill right there, you get the lead and you get that first batter out, it's a huge lift for you. For young, they're pitching coach for Oakland. That's what you want out of a youngster. Get that first out after your offense picked you up. High bar looks at one outside, ball one. The White Sox and Royals were able to play tonight after being snowed out in their opener, and the White Sox beat Kansas City 4 2. Two and zero oh to Eric Ibar. Oh. Toronto edge Detroit tonight, five to four, and the Blue Jays are two and zero. Oh. Three and one to Ibar. Ibar is trying to get on base, either base on ball or base hit. With his speed, Kale not particularly quick to the plate. Get in scoring position. Oh. Strike two to Eric. Ibar batting in the number nine spot in the batting order tonight. That means after him, it's Figgins. So they have plenty of speed when they get those two guys on. And I bars on. It's a one out walk, and that brings up Figgins. Figgy walked and stole second in the first inning, moved to third on a fly ball, and scored on a ground ball. to Figgins. A little bit of a slide step by Cahill. He does have a quick move to first. See him trying to speed up a little bit. When you do that, you have a tendency to drop your elbow and elevate the pitch. He's walked four now. And also a wild pitch home a run. One and oh to Figgins. Two and oh to Sean. And Trevor Cahill is working himself into a little jam right here. That'll get Kurt Young out to talk to him. And sometimes pitcher gets distracted because of the speed that the Angels have. Come out of your element. Two pitches in a row. With one, he had a slide step, then he forced that breaking pitch. Try to be quicker to the plate to negate the running game. But you got to be able to pitch your game. It's a lot of great pitches over the years. With Bob Gibson, Greg Maddox, Dwight Good, guys that were fairly easy to steal on. But if you get the hitter out, it doesn't matter. Trevor Cahill, two and zero oh to Figgins. And leading for the first time in the game. The visit from Kurt Young pays an immediate dividend on a strike to Figgins. Two and one. Popped in the air into left center field. Whoa, Sweeney and Buck came together there, and Sweeney makes the grab. Right in front of Travis Buck. That was close to disaster for the A's. Sean Figgins hit that ball pretty well, but another fly ball. Communication not quite there for the Oakland A's. 
center fielder is baseball, you're always going to call. You can see him calling the ball. He's the quarterback of the defense, the center fielder is. They'll be able to make that play. Here is Howie Kendrick. Howie has been swinging a hot bat. One and zero. His approach at the plate these first couple of nights, he looks pretty locked in right now. Even though he's 0 for 2 tonight, he's squared up two baseballs already. One to right, and one to center. And Cahill falls behind on Kendrick 2-0. Three to two, Oakland in the fourth. The Angels with a runner on at first base, Ibar, and he's driven back by the pickoff throw. Well, this young guy's thrown 77 pitches so far tonight. There haven't really been any real easy innings for either one of these pitchers tonight. See the difference in the Angels. They, they preach it in spring training about being more patient at the plate. Four base on balls already. Now 3-0 count also. They might let him swing the bat. But we'll never know. It's ball four. The second walk in the inning given up by Cahill. The fifth walk in the game. Bobby generally patient. And this might be one of those times if he gets that fastball first pitch, he might let it out. Ron Romanic, a former Angel pitcher, is Oakland's bullpen coach. Bobby Abreu at the plate. to Abreu. We saw Wirtz, Michael Wirtz, come into the ballgame last night. And he's up again tonight. One ball, one strike. Bobby Abreu takes inside ball two. Cahill, of course, if he is able to hold on to this lead, would have to go five innings to qualify for his first major league win. And we're here in the fourth inning. He's about to make pitch number 83 on the night. And he's behind on Abreu, three and one. When you're a young pitcher, you've been inconsistent around the zone, you're not going to get a borderline pitch. That was pretty close, but he didn't get it. If he loses him, he'll have to pitch to this guy with the bases loaded. But Abreu hits it right to Mark Ellis, and the Angels are frustrated again. They leave two more men on base. After four, three to two, Oakland.
night at the ballpark. The Angels and A's are having a good time. And of course, so are the fans. As we get to the fifth inning, the Angels are trailing. Not that that guy has noticed. Orlando Cabrera leads off the fifth inning. O.C.'s 0 for 2. And Mosley gets a strike. Cabrera's a player whose teams have done well over the last few years. And you just have to think that's not so much a coincidence, right? Especially when you play that shortstop position. Very athletic position. He's been on a number of very good winning teams from Boston, the Angels, White Sox. Two balls, two strikes to Orlando Cabrera. He is used to going to the playoffs. Comes back 2 2. And OC stays alive. been a 1-2-3 inning for either side tonight. And it's the Angels who have really blown some chances. They have seven men left on base through the first four innings. Cabrera takes a call third strike. Two-seam fastball starts off the corner, catches the corner for the call third strike. Good pitch, good execution. Atlanta Cabrera trying to work that a little bit, but that did get the corner. It's a big inning for Dustin Moses. He tries to keep this game close, going through the heart of the Oakland A's batting order. You can see the shift right here for Giambi now with nobody on base, but more so now in the outfield. Howie Kendrick is. That's Howie out there in shallow right field. Last night that shift worked, and Giambi hit one right to Kendrick. One and one. Oakland has out hit the Angels 7 4 tonight. Two balls into strike to Jason Giambi. Giambi not so sure about that one. A lot of times a pitcher, when you're going inside against a powerful hitter, you want to stay around in those hands. Let that ball round out over the plate. That's where they get their arms extended. And a line drive base hit for Giambi. Hit number eight for the Oakland A's tonight. That brings up Nomar. It's a fastball to the outside part of the plate. Giambi was able to get those arms extended. Got the good part of the bat. Base in the center field. One out, one on, and Nomar at the plate. He pulls one into left field. Juan Rivera. Watch 
misses that one, no foul. Scramble on for the baseball down there. and one to Nomar. Good breaking ball there. And this Oakland team over the last five, six years, very patient. But Nomar, a free swinger, a little bit different than you're going to see at a normal Oakland A batter. He's up there hacking. Good all-speed pitch by Mosley against him. One and two to Garcia Parra. Both of these pitchers throwing a lot of pitches. Mosley's now at 82. Cahill's thrown above 80. Nomar hits a fly ball into left field. Juan Rivera's right there. Two outs of the inning. Eric Chavez coming up for the end. Stuck to his plan to try and come back from the injuries that have just ruined his last few years. Everybody, he's worked so hard to come back, even at a setback in spring training. Yet here he was, able to get ready to go at the opening day. Playing back-to-back -back games now. See how it's dwindled down since 2005 at 160 games. Each year it's gone down. Last year only 23. One ball, one strike to Chavez.
Sox this Sunday. This offer is available in select seating areas when using the password ANGELS at the Angel Stadium ticket window or you can go to angelsbaseball.com. Free activities for kids include coloring Easter eggs, appearances by the Easter Bunny, and a post-game parade around the bases for kids 12 and under. And the Easter Bunny solidified that. He signed the dotted line today that he would be here. Vladdy hits a pop fly into shallow right field, and Jack Tosh drops the ball. Vladdy's going for two. The throw to second will not get him. Not only a misplay by the open right fielder, but hustle by the Angels DH, Vlad Guerrero. Great hustle by Vlad. You can see right off the get go, this ball is troubled. Jack Cuss was looking around, looking for help. Just took his eye off at the very end, hits off his glove. Big break there for the Angels. That's an error on Cuss. Part of that, too, Sweeney's playing so deep in left center field. He had a long way to go. Cuss had to come in and make the play or try to make the play. Torrey Hunter, the batter. So an error opens the door. For the Angels who trail by a run here in the fifth inning. Ground ball. Nice backhand pickup by Cahill, the pitcher. They have Vladdy in a rundown. Torrey Hunter heading for second as Vlad is tagged out and Hunter gets safely to second base. Well, that was a nice job of getting that rundown by Vlad. Generally, you don't want to go there to third base and come back to the pitcher, but he stayed in the rundown long enough to allow Torrey Hunter to get back in that scoring position in second. By Cahill, he did his job. He ran back to Vlad, forced him to second. A little bit of a high throw allowed Vlad to stay in there just long enough for Torrey Hunter. Nice job by Torrey to get to second base. Now he can still tie the game up with a base hit by Kenny Morales. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. The Angels have left seven men on base in the first four innings. Trying to break through with a big hit here in this inning to at least tie the game. Okay, he'll bluff Torrey back to second. Torrey was thinking about timing him and going on that one, too. He was drifting off at second. One and oh to Kendry Morales. Torrey's going to go. He's got to make sure he gets a great jump. And he has to be successful. One and oh. Two balls, no strikes to Kendry Morales. similar to this, but I will put the go-ahead run on the bases. Juan Rivera on deck. 3-0 to Kendry. He takes a strike. One out in the fifth inning. Oh, he throws that same pitch again. Ball is going to be covered. Bounce to the right side, but foul. And it 
It's starting to rain here at the Big A. Well, we knew it was in the area. It had spared us through the first half of the game. But now those blankets might come in handy, at least for a while. I guess it would probably be worse to sit there with a wet blanket on your head. It's also important for the Eagles to go to school here because if they could do this inning open, it would become an official ball game. Full count to Kendry Morales. And another fake by Cahill. Three balls, two strikes. Kendry still alive. Certainly with this pitch count now for K.O., this will be his last inning regardless. He get through it or not. The 3-2 on the way. A line drive, base hit, center field will knock in Torrey Hunter. Henry Morales ties in the game. Hitter already in Morales. Good at bat. Worked the count, got ahead of the count, and the sinker that was up in the strike zone hits that ball right up the middle. Didn't try to pull it. He just got to run across because Torrey Hunter did a tremendous job getting into scoring position after that rundown by Vlad. Juan Rivera up there now. So the Angels cash in and even the ball game up. One ball, one strike to Rivera. This is his major league debut. And he's thrown a lot of pitches in four and a third innings. That's for his first start here in the month of April. One and two to Rivera. Cahill's done a good job on Juan, getting him to fly out harmlessly to center field and ground out. Sinker once swung over top of that one. What kind of sink action are you want to be able to get more of an uppercut swing and swung down on it, missed it. This is pitch number 100 coming up. That strikeout of Juan Rivera was his first career strikeout. to Mathis. Mathis had a double back in the second inning and scored a run. He's behind on the count here, 0-2.
The game is tied at three. Fans tomorrow night, all fans in attendance, will receive a free 12-month wall calendar filled with many great angel moments, courtesy of AT&T. Tickets for this game are still available, but a very limited number of tickets are available for tomorrow's game. You can still get them for $3 in the view level, $5 in the lower view, when using the password VLAD at the Angel Stadium ticket window, or go to angelsbaseball.com. There's the calendar. And we go to the sixth inning. With Dustin Mosley still out there for the Angels. He's 87 pitches into his outing. Jack Cust leads off. Strike one. Jack Cust had a couple good at-bats against Dustin Mosley. A base hit up the middle, then that rocket off the wall for a single and an RBI. Owen two. This is the only game still going in the American League. We mentioned Seattle lost in the ninth inning in Minnesota tonight. Texas did not play tonight after winning their opener yesterday. White Sox beat the Royals 4-2. The Red Sox over the Rays 5-3. Challenge in that uh, AL East? No, nah, just too tough with the division. A couple of their key guys not available in the rotation. And their offense is still pretty good. Getting healthy. Not quite there as far as being able to compete against the Rays, Red Sox, and Yankees. Three balls, two strikes to Jack Cust. Still some life in that right arm. Deep into this outing for Dustin Mosley. That's a good pitch. A two-seam fastball. Good late movement. At 89 miles an hour. Give him a chance to be able to still be able to get the victory if he can get through this inning and the Angels can pick up some offense in the bottom of the sixth. Kurt Suzuki stepping in now for the Oakland A's. Ball one. And Mosley gets a strike with that fastball. Big batter for Dustin, especially with a left-hander buck on deck. Darren Oliver warming up. Suzuki singled and scored earlier in the game but this one's right out of Brayu. Two down. Travis Buck coming up. This is almost like playing in another stadium in another city. You can really smell the rain, can't you? It's just not quite as cold as it would be in other places. This feel different, especially what it was when they were taking batting practice today. Clear blue skies, about 75. It's dropped a lot. There's definitely moisture in the air. Well, it was down to 62 by the time of the first pitch. Probably in the upper 50s now. But you're making sure that Darren Elvis ready. One and one to Buck. This will be Mosley's 100th pitch tonight. center field for a base hit. 
Two-out single for Travis Buck. And Mark Ellis coming up. Butcher's going to go out to the mound. Mosley's really kept them in the game. And you know he badly wants to get that one more out and at least have a chance to win. He gets this out. And so should give him that confidence that he gets through this inning. It's a tough one, and Mark Ellis has had a couple good at-bats against him also. He's had a lot of big hits against the Angels throughout his career, Mark Ellis has. Ellis has a double and a single tonight. Butcher heading back to the dugout. And Darren Oliver looks like he's ready if needed. Mosley trying to close out the sixth inning in a tie ball game. If you're a pitcher right here, you just you're bearing down because you know your manager is giving you confidence to try to get through it. But you also know there's a left-hander on deck with a lefty down in the bullpen getting up and ready. So you know this is your last hit. Exactly. And behind two and zero oh to Ellis. the Angels in the ball game. You can sing there that number. No base on ball so far for Dustin Mosley. You can scatter those hits. And now he's behind 3-0 and to Ellis. Too close pitch in the outside part of the play. Try to bring it back, but just off the corner. There's a strike. Ellis, as Gooby mentioned, has hit the Angels pretty well. Three and one. The runner goes. The pitch is grounded up the middle. Kendrick is there to make the play. And Dustin Mosley goes six innings. He leaves tied at three. to face Mosley this Sunday. Michael Wirtz takes over for Oakland. 
He's in for the second consecutive game. Jeff Mathis leads off the bottom of the sixth. He's got a decent fastball, 87 to 90. He's got a slider. He will mix in a changeup also. Definitely a slider is his out pitch. We showed you Mosley a moment ago. He could either win or have nothing to do with it. He cannot be the losing pitcher tonight. One and one to Jeff Mathis. Mathis doubled and scored in the second inning. One ball, one strike. Foul ball. Kevin Jepson has now taken over in the bullpen where Oliver was warming up a moment ago. So Cahill in his Major League debut, he will not take a loss tonight either. As Mathis goes down on strikes. So Cahill did a pretty nice job. Yeah, I really did. Let's see if you're from Oceanside. He probably had a number of family and friends come up, watch the game, and did a decent enough job. Five innings. He up that five hits and three runs. Only two earned, but the five base on balls. Generally a guy that's usually around the strike zone and one strikeout. You can tell that nerves, that first game out in the big league, especially against a team that won 100 games last year. Did a good enough job to keep him in the game. He's one of five uh, rookies on this opening day roster for the Oakland Days this year. Oh, and one to Eric Ibar. Hard hit ball. Rolling toward the corner. Cust gets to it. Ibar has a one-out double. What a quick bat, too. Fastball is up in the strike zone. Good swing, too, by Eric Ibar. Hit that ball hard. Cust did a nice job of cutting that off. He gets around the corner. That's a triple for Ibar. Now Figgins at the plate. That's the fourth double tonight for the Angels. Figgy takes a strike. Michael Wirtz working. In relief for the Cup for the uh, Oakland A's. Check swing by Figgins to Cabrera at shortstop, and his throw will get him. Good play by Orlando Cabrera. Nice pick. I know Mark Garcia Parra came up with a great shortstop. Move over to first. Good scoop. I know Mark. Howie Kendrick at the plate. Kendrick Cabrera always just gets just enough on the throw to get the runner out of first. Michael Wirtz. I almost said for the Cubs. He was with the Cubs last year. Ball one. In fact, he's been with the Cubs since 2004 until this year. Nice block by Suzuki. Mention works his number one pitch as far as his out pitch is that slider, and he will bounce it on occasion. 
Good Suzuki did a nice job of getting his body in front. Earlier in the game, the ball got away from Suzuki for a, a wild pitch and a run scored. 1-0 to Howie Kendrick. 2-0. Howie walked the last time up. We're tied up in the sixth inning tonight. That light rain we had has gone away as Kendrick takes a strike. Santiago Casilla loosening up in the bullpen for Oakland. Howie, oh, Howie waves at that one. That's four sliders in a row where it's his thrown. Howie Kendrick. Slider on the outside part of the plate. Good nasty slider by Wirtz. And he gets him. The Angels leave a runner at third once again. And we're still tied at three. Angels Baseball on Mike 13 is brought to you by Howard's. Catch all the excitement of Angels Baseball on a new high-definition flat-screen TV from Howard's. Official appliance and flat-screen superstores of the Los Angeles Angels. And here at the Big A, we move into the seventh inning. Angels 3, A's 3. Another good crowd here tonight. Top of the seventh, top of the order for Oakland, Ryan Sweeney to face Kevin Jepson. Fouls the first pitch away. The numbers for Jepson last year in the minor leagues 13 saves and a 1 8 1 earned run average. Right back up the middle. It's a base hit for Ryan Sweeney. And that's hit number 10 for the A's tonight. That was a pretty good swing because that fastball was rushed up at 97 miles an hour by Jepson. Ryan Sweeney is staying back, looking up the middle with that good fastball. One thing he had in his favor was elevated just enough to be able to get the good part of the bat on it. Now Cabrera up there, 0 for 3. Fouled back to the screen. A 
the world champion Philadelphia Phillies were shut out today by the Atlanta Braves. 4 nothing. One ball, one strike. The Braves go to 2 0. Jeff Mathis catch and throw almost got him he was leaning just a little bit barely got his hand underneath the tag I thought he had him he was able to get his fingers in just before the tag was applied two and one to Cabrera Kevin Jepson on in relief for the Angels Dustin Mosley his first start of the year, he threw 105 pitches tonight. Neither starter will figure in the decision tonight. It's up to the bullpens now. And Cabrera pops one up. Kendrick calls off Morales. One out of the seventh with Jason Giambi coming up. Giambi single last time up. The last seven years with the Yankees. Fastball inside. Well, oh, that was a good fastball, too. 95 five miles an hour inside corner, just off the plate. I don't know if we've gotten a chance to talk about how Giambi did against you, Ruby. Did we cover that yet? Yeah. <laughs> 2 0. So if you were out there right now, what would you throw him? Well, I throw him a strike because eventually he's going to make it out. There you go. Think in the line of a ground ball because he's a guy that if you get him to hit into a ground ball, there's a good chance that you will get a double play. You're going to go fast on the outside part of the plate. A 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Well, if I had this this kind of a fastball, I might be wanting to do that one, too. 94. John be unable to catch up with that one. Somebody's going to get hurt. So far, nothing real serious has happened, but look at that thing. Three pieces. At the plate. Wow. Still has the handle in his hand. Two parts of it. The other part snapped. He's got a different bat now. He's changed colors. Two balls, two strikes. And a hard hit ball foul. But he went with the lighter bat because he's thrown so hard, Jepson. Yeah, it's a good call. Might very well have done that. Two and two to Jason Giambi. The game tied up in the seventh. On the ground, foul again. Boy, there are certain hitters that they just look threatening when they get to the plate. And this guy's one of them, don't you think? 
Oh, definitely. Professional. Dangerous, too. He lines one to right field for a base hit. One hopped by Abreu. But Jason Giambi has his second hit of the night. And Oakland is threatening again. First and second. With one out and Nomar coming up. Sweeney out there chatting with Howie Kendrick. The thing is, Math is out there with Jeffs now with the runner at second. Got to go different signs. Plus, the fact is, Nomar is a notorious first ball, fastball hitter. Got to be careful in this spot. Nomar is one for three tonight. Well, he went after it, didn't he? That was a fastball that he'd like, too. It was out where he'd get his arms extended a little bit, but just enough giddy-up on it by Jepson to make him pop that out foul. No balls, two strikes to Nomar Garcia-Para. No balls, two strikes. Good block by Mathis. But that was textbook. Squaring up your body to make sure that ball doesn't get away because a curveball can spin a lot of different ways once it hits that dirt. Mathis gets the body in front and has the glove down there so there's no gap between the legs. Took it off the chest. tie-breaking run from scoring but could not prevent the base hit it's a hanger up the middle oh, did a nice job stopping it just he's trying to flip it out and over to Eric Ibar couldn't get a good grip on it you're right where he did save a run still an option right now if you get a ground ball you get a double play get through the inning Mike Butcher now talking to Jepson. Eric Chavez coming to the plate with the bases loaded. He's a left-handed hitter. They had Darren Oliver ready earlier, but they'll stay with Jepson. Well, the last time up, Eric Chavez came up. Great scouting by the Angels. You got the outfielders so far apart, and right here at secondary, you have that play. Nice play by Eric Ibar, but scouting allowed him to make that play. Chavez swings and misses. There has never been an Oakland third baseman who has hit more home runs than Eric Chavez. Sal Bando would be second. It's on the ground, slowly to the right side. Can they get two? No. They get one at second. And the go-ahead run scores for the A's. Ryan Sweeney comes in from third. So on a fielder's choice, Eric Chavez drives in the go-ahead run. Now, was this hit slow enough where it's unable to make the play at the plate? Well, starting that line, and then get to at least get the runner there at second base. No chance at a double play. Now first and third with two outs. And Jack Cust, another dangerous left-handed hitter at the plate. Runners on the corners with two outs.
Jason Giambi aboard at third. Eric Chavez is at first. Four to three Oakland now in the seventh. Two and oh to Cust. Well, the pitchers have had some long innings tonight. Darren Oliver in the bullpen. Now Jepson about to make his 22nd pitch of the inning. Behind 2-0 to Cust. Who hits a pop fly into shallow center field. That'll drop for an RBI base hit. Giambi scores from third. And the A's lead 5-3 as Jack Cust knocks in Giambi. That's a dangerous, strong batter like Jack Cust. Elevated pitch. He's able to fight it off. You have enough base runners. Eventually some of those hits are going to fall in with runners in scoring position. That's what happened this inning for Oakland. Fastball up. Most times when you see a flare in the outfield, it's a ball that's elevated in the strike zone. You don't see many broken bats that flare in there on a ball down in the zone. So that was a, not the pitch that Jepson wanted to throw. The A's have... 13 hits in the game. The batter, Kurt Suzuki. And he lines one into right field. Abreu makes the catch. But the A's score twice. We've reached the seventh inning stretch. the bottom of the seventh inning at the Big A. Fans, have you made your plans to be in the Angels Red Sox series that takes place this weekend, Friday through Sunday? If not, there are still great seats available, and the Angels have an exciting ticket special. Now available for this series, fans can purchase three tickets and get one free in select seating areas when using the password ANGELS at the Angel Stadium ticket window or angelsbaseball.com. Santiago Casilla takes over in the bottom of the seventh inning for Oakland. Well, he's got a great fastball. The year last year, 3-9-3 ERA, 2-1 record. He can throw the ball 93 to 96 mile an hour as a slider and a changeup. This fastball is his number one pitch. That's Raze Davis, who pinch ran for Jack Cust last inning and stays in the game in center field for Oakland. The batter for the Angels, Bobby Abreu. Leading off the seventh. The Angels now down by a couple of runs. 
And they've been out hit 13 to 6 tonight. This game was 2 to nothing, Angels, after three innings tonight. But Oakland now with a 5 to 3 advantage. to Abreu. that bat so much. Sometimes if you're a batter, you're squeezing the bat so hard, it takes away your ability to be able to keep your wrist through. A nice and relaxed hand grip by Bobby Abreu. A little unorthodox, though, isn't it? This, but, but most guys, you, you see when they're going through a slump, a hitter, they're squeezing it too much. Just like a pitcher, if you squeeze the baseball, you take away that movement. Casilla gets Abreu. Boy, that was a tough pitch to hit. That's the slide. Got a hit of the count. Look at that down slider. Nasty pitch. See, I mean, you got a guy throwing 93 to 96. You're looking fastball, and you drop that pitch. Tough one to lay off of. Vlad Guerrero at the plate for the Angels. Has reached base three times. He has a single, a walk, and he reached on an error. Chavez backs up, long throw, and picked out of the dirt nicely by Nomar. Wow. What do you feel that all the outfield grass? Chavez a gold glover. Nomar, nice job again, picking it. So gathered up, threw the cross, and Nomar are able to stretch and make the pick. Not an easy play, too. That's a long throw, about as long as you can throw. And in the infield. Torrey Hunter at the plate now. The Angels have stopped hitting a little bit in this one. They had four hits and two runs in the first three innings. But they have only two hits since then. And three of the last six batters have struck out. They've had some opportunities. They had some walks early in the game against KO. But lately, though, the pitch has been pretty tough. Works had that good slider. And I can see it with a good fastball. In the air to right field. Sweeney's over there now. And near the line, he makes the catch. The Angels go out 1-2-3 in the seventh. They trail Oakland 
for the T-Mobile play of the game. Eric Chavez way back on the outfield grass. And then Nomar with a nice pick at first base. Good spin, too. Got himself a good throwing position. But Nomar, even better play, be able to pick it. Eric Chavez smiling over six gold gloves. The fourth most ever by a third baseman. Almost looks like he's thinking about it. Darren Oliver into the ball game for the Angels. Dio's numbers were good last year. And the first man he'll face in the eighth inning is Travis Buck. That last inning... The bottom of the seventh. That was the first one, two, three inning of this ball game. Both teams have left eight men on base. And the A's lead five to three. One and oh to Travis Buck. One ball, one strike. Darren Oliver's job right now is to keep it close. Because last year came back a number of times to be able to pull it off, particularly at home. You keep it close, give him a chance. One and one to Travis Buck. This crowd has sat through a little bit of drizzle here tonight. 43,000. 396. The rain wasn't much. But it made it a little bit wet for a little while. Rain outs here. The last time it happened was in 1995. That's pretty amazing. So you're saying it doesn't rain in Southern California? Well... We might want to cash in those tarps if we can find a buyer. One and two to Travis Buck. Two balls, two strikes. Rain lasted about 10 minutes here at the Big A tonight. That was it. To first, Morales will go to the bag. Here is the Jack in the Box game summary. Dustin Mosley, no decision tonight. Travis Cahill, his major league debut, he will not get a decision. But Oakland got three in the fourth and two more in the seventh, and they used no long balls there, all singles. There's a strike into Mark Ellis. But they have had plenty of hits. The A's with 13 base hits tonight. Ellis has two. typical when you look at this Oakland team, they're a team at high on base percentage and look for the long ball. All right, they scored those runs via the single. Up here in this happy they got the chance to score. Oh, there's a shot into the A's dugout. Cabrera. <laughs> and two to Mark Ellis. One ball, two strikes.
In the air to shallow left. Going out, Ibar. Coming in, Juan Rivera. And Ibar takes it. Now, Oliver has a chance to give the Angels their first 1-2-3 inning against Oakland. Ryan Sweeney at the plate. The A's leadoff man has a couple of singles of his own tonight. You get an idea what you have in spring training. Now, how long into the regular season do you think it takes before you really know what your identity is? Well, I think, you know, and Mike Sosa has mentioned it's probably about the first set to 40 games, I think, when you get the start of the season. Fair ball by Sweeney down toward the right field corner. Bobby Abreu plays it in. It's a double for Ryan Sweeney. The 14th hit for the A's tonight. And he's showing a quick bat again. He has three hits tonight. He does much better against right-handed pitching, but here against a lefty. The outside part of the plate. Ball ran inside. Still able to get the big part of the bat, hit that ball down the line hard for a double. So you think it's about 40 games. Maybe the middle of May you start to get a pretty good feel. Yeah, you do because you just, you're just you figuring out your pitching staff. You're figuring out your bench players, guys that, you know, even though they had good springs, it's a different feel because it's cooler weather. You know, you're not getting as consistent at bats because sometimes you have some rain outs here and there. And you know where guys fit in their roles. That's what, you know, Mike Sosha, most managers will say, once they get their roles set, then you know what kind of team you're going to have. 1-0 to Cabrera. Well, the hitters don't like the cold weather too much, do they? No, they don't, especially when you're facing a guy that throws the ball hard, especially if you can throw it in the inside part and play it around the hands, then it'll sting. Jason Bolger is loosening up in the Angel bullpen. Oliver's fallen behind Cabrera, 3-0. and And he walks him on four straight. Two on, two out for the A's. Now the Angels know already down by two. This is a big at bat coming up. There goes Butcher out to talk to Oliver before Giambi bats. They did have the open base too. And when he fell behind against Orlando Cabrera, lefty coming on deck. Even though it's Jason Giambi coming up, they're suited lefty versus lefty. There aren't too many situations Darren Oliver hasn't faced. That's the first walk allowed by an Angel pitcher tonight. That's some impressive numbers. Maybe he didn't want to use that open base. 629. His career lefty pitcher going as a lefty batter here. Pretty hard to believe against a, a left-hander who's had as long a career as Darren Oliver. And a significant amount of it bats, too. One and oh. One ball, one strike. Two on, two out. Five to three, Oakland in the eighth. And Giambi with a little pop down the left field line has another hit against Oliver. And he drives in a run. That'll go as a double for Giambi. Six to three, Oakland. That wasn't a bad pitch. In on the hands. It always seems to happen when a guy has success against a particular pitcher. He's still going to fight it off and get a base hit out of it anyhow. And Mike Sosha will go to the bullpen now. We're in the eighth inning. Oakland six, the Angels three.
There's never a bad time to shop at the Angel Team Store. And there's a lot of folks in there tonight still. I think it's a jacket. It's a little chilly out there. Maybe, yeah. A lot of red. Well, that goes without saying, doesn't it? Place is filled with red. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Angels down by three. Santiago Casilla pitching to Kendry Morales to lead off the eighth inning. Need some base runners. You see, Will Walton dies for 20 walks in 50 innings last season. It's the best way to get back in the game. A couple of guys on and then look for the big fly. Two and zero oh to Kendry Morales. Santiago Casilla from the Dominican Republic falls behind Morales. Casilla is kind of an interesting story. For five years, he pitched under the name Jairo Garcia. From 2000 to 05, he was Garcia. Now he's Casilla. Three and two. Casilla is 28 years old. Right back up the middle. Nice play made by Orlando Cabrera. Good positioning, too, playing right where the ball was hit up the middle. Good scouting. Got him situated right behind the mound. Playing in the hole there, that's a base hit up the middle. Leonard's right in that position to be able to make the play, make the throw across, and get Kenny Morales leading off the eighth. Juan Rivera digging in now. OC knows that turf out there pretty well. You were talking about Giambi and Darren Oliver. Dio made a pretty good pitch on Giambi, who doubled down the line the opposite way, right off the handle of the bat. And there's a pop fly off the bat of Rivera. Mark Ellis will go out and get it. Do you feel like that sometimes, Gilby, when you know a hitter's had great success against you, that no matter what, somehow you'll find a hole? Always. Don Manningly was a guy that I had a tough time with. And no matter what I did against him, he would fight it off. And you know, even when he had his bad back late in his career, it didn't matter. I mean, he would make some outs against other pitchers on our staff, but he was always going to get his two or three hits against me because no matter what, it was comfortable. Same thing if you're a pitcher. If you, you could be facing a Hall of Famer, if you feel good, you're going to get him out. Yeah. Saw that confidence level. The batter is Jeff Mathis with two outs. The Padres beat the Dodgers tonight, 4-2 to two in San Diego. First win of the year for Bud Black's team. Two and one to Mathis. We're in the bottom of the eighth here, and Oakland has a 6-3 lead. Two balls, two strikes. Ooh, just missed with that one. 
94 mile an hour fastball. Pretty good pitch in the outside part of the plate. I want that if I'm on the hill. Jeff Mathis caught a break, and you're at the mercy of a pitcher if there's that good of a pitch on you. And he walked him. now. Houston Street's gone. And they still have four outs to get in this game. Eric Ibar now trying to get on base to give the Angels a chance to bring the tying run to the plate here in the eighth inning. And maybe they'll go to Ziegler early. We'll see. And that was just a pickoff throw with the first to give him a little more time he's going to be ready. And Bob Guerin. Talking, hasn't taken the baseball yet. He's going to leave him in. Ibar. Two for three in his career against Santiago Casilla. One and oh. This is when our manager runs out there in that spot. He's delivering a message saying, hey, listen, make him swing the bat. Don't let him back in there by walking base runners. Put him in a position to be able to one swing after that, you get back in it. Ibar doubled last time up. In the air to center, Davis goes back and makes the catch. The Angels leave another man on, and after eight, it's six to three, Oakland. Top of the ninth inning, six to three Oakland A's. Eric Chavez to lead off for Oakland here in the ninth. Bolger's first pitch of the ninth in there for a strike to Chavez. Oh, Oakland. Their offense has come to life tonight. 15 hits in the game. Chavez rips one into right center field. And that's another base hit for the A's. A double leading off the inning. Yeah, Oakland used to have. 
have a slugger named Reggie Jackson. I feel a little bad about what we said about you and Giambi Gooby. So in the interest of fairness, Reggie Jackson, lifetime against Mark Gubaza, 133. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, thank you for uh, pointing that out. <laughs> you didn't know that one, huh? Let's begin to run and hide. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Hall of Famer, though, at least. That's good. <laughs> that's right. The bunt is popped up, and Figgy can't quite get to it. Well, I have another one. Dick Schofield, not a Hall of Famer, but a good player, he went 0 for 28 against Mark Gubazon. I ran into him a, a few years ago, and I, I somebody told me about that. I had to yeah. mention that to him. He said he remembered. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I try to hide against people like Jason Giambi who have had such success against me. <laughs> Owen one to Davis. He tries to bunt the runner along again. That was at his head. One and one. Not your typical Oakland A's baseball where they sacrifice bunt, but it's a, a big run for the A's if they get him over to third base. They failed a couple times early in the game to get the runner over from second base with no outs. The bunt in the air again, and this time he's out. Well, he certainly couldn't get the bunt down. He popped it up twice. Now Kurt Suzuki coming up. There's a pitch that was up. Running in on the hand, too. Very difficult. That's the thing. If you're a pitcher and you got a guy squaring around, you want to throw an elevated pitch. It's much more difficult to be able to get that ball down on the ground. What a difference a day makes, though, for Oakland. They had three hits last night. Tonight they have 16. Suzuki takes a strike. Billy Bean's goal, the GM for Oakland during the offseason, was to improve that offense. and He brought in some players. You see some... The benefits of that tonight with 16 hits. Owen one to Kurt Suzuki. Foul on the right field side. Well, the Angels have one more shot at him in the bottom of the ninth, so they don't want to let the score get any higher than it is. The top of the Angel order due up in the bottom of the night. O2 to Suzuki. Popped up right side, foul ground for Kendry Morales. Two out. Travis Buck coming to the plate. Buck has a hit tonight, one for four. And drove in a run with a ground ball. Chavez at second base. Ball one to Travis Buck. Two more games with Oakland after tonight. And then a weekend visit by the Red Sox. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Two and oh to Buck. Two one now. 
Jason Bojie does have a good fastball. 93, sometimes up to 95 range. Good curveball. It's been a, an issue with Jason as far as repeating his pitches, repeating his mechanics. He can be consistent. He can be a big, valuable part of this bullpen. Falls behind on Buck, 3-1. and one. Mark Ellis on deck for the A's. And he lost him. Mark Ellis up there again. It's been a long night. Soship watching Ellis bat for the fifth time now. And that's the number nine hitter. Ball one to Ellis. With that open base. Earlier when he walked Travis Buck, most times you're gonna Mike Sosha would go ahead and walk him intensely, but Mark Ellis up at the plate here has had a lot of success. It's the angels of late we showed that graph girl hitting over 324. One and one to the Oakland second baseman. Pop foul. Jason Bolger ahead of Ellis, one and two. You said that word for Bolger, consistency. He has the stuff. He does. I mean, he's got electric stuff. Fastball and curveball. He's got to stay within that mechanics. And he strikes out Ellis to end the top of the ninth. One more shot at it for the Angels. It's 6-3 to three Oakland as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning at the Big A. The A's trying to make it 1-1. One and one. The rally monkey hoping to get it to 2-0 and oh Angels. He's got that magic. Brad 
Ziegler in there to try and close it out for the A's. Bottom of the ninth, top of the order for the Angels. Very deceptive stuff. Not overpowering the fastball, only 80 to 86, but good sink. Also has a curveball and a changeup. The first 39 innings of his career, nobody scored against him. sinker down in his own. Pico doesn't give up a whole lot of home runs, too, so you got to bunch some hits together. It's two home runs allowed at 59 and two-thirds innings pitch last year. One ball, two strikes to Howie Kendrick. Ziegler trying to get the save in what would be Oakland's first win of the year. He looks at Figgins, but Sean probably not going anywhere here. Unless it's just to try and stay out of a double play. Two and two to Kendrick. Well, the big thing is, if you're open, that run doesn't matter. You're up by three runs. That's why they're letting Nomar go back and play defense. If he wants to go, so be it. Bob Garen, don't worry about the stolen base at this point. Figgins does go, and they do not make a throw. And it's a full count now on Howie Kendrick. Three and two. Bobby Abreu on deck. Guerrero after that. But Kendrick taps back to the mound. On a 3-2 pitch, Ziegler gets him for the first out. Ziegler hasn't pitched a whole lot in spring training. He's on for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic. He's been apart from the A's. His command hasn't been quite as good because he hasn't got that much work in. He may indeed leave one of those sinkers up in his zone. If it is, especially with not a lot of velocity, it's certainly hittable. Bobby Abreu. Oh for 4 tonight. Yeah. 
way out in front. I'll tell you what, did that back up on him, the backup slider. Glad if he could stay back just a little bit. Oh, man, the cover. And he strikes him out on three pitches. Same thing, that sweeping slider again. 71 miles an hour. Tough to stay back if you're a hitter. It was one year ago tonight that Torrey Hunter hit a walk-off grand slam home run to beat the Cleveland Indians. He needs one right now to tie the Oakland A's with two outs in the ninth. third base side. One ball, one strike. Abreu at first with two outs. Hunter fouls it away. Strike two. Glad with that slow slider. The fastball so far against Torrey Hunter. Head of the count. One ball, two strikes. And he struck him out. Brad Ziegler strikes out Vladdy Guerrero and Torrey Hunter to end the game, and the A's win it 6-4. Well, after giving up the hit, Gooby, that's a pretty good job by Ziegler. See how tough he is to be able to pick up, especially if you're a right-handed batter. 